Today's lesson is on designing experiments. An experiment deliberately imposes treatments on individuals to measure their responses. A treatment is what each individual in the experiment is assigned to do. A response variable measures the outcome of interest. An explanatory variable is what is deliberately changed to see if this causes a change in the response variable. Control is keeping the conditions exactly the same for each trial except for the treatments being compared. An observational study is a study that uses available data but does not impose treatments. Many people believe that it is easier to hit home runs with a heavier bat. After all, famous home run hitters such as Babe Ruth used extremely heavy bats compared to other players. To answer this question, a softball player decided to try two different bats, one that weighs 28 ounces and one that weighs 30 ounces. She will use each bat 10 times and record whether or not she hits a home run on each swing. So A says, what are the explanatory and response variables? So the explanatory would be the type of bat, and the response would be hit a home run or not. What are the treatments? In this case, and in every case, the treatments go off the explanatory variable. So explanatory is general. In this case, it was type of bat. So the treatments would be 28-ounce bat and the 30-ounce bat. Why is it important to randomize the order in which the bats are used? Well, if she uses the heavier bat first and the lighter bat second, she might get more tired. She might get kind of in a groove and to where she's favoring one bat over the other. Or if she swings the lighter bat first, she might do better and get tired with that one as well. Both of these help prevent bias. What variables are important to control during the experiment? Well, there are a lot of things that you would want to make sure you controlled. The length of the bat, the brand, the type of softball, The pitches, in this case a machine would be better than a person, so that would be more consistent. Um, the field length, and there are so many others you could come up with. On a question like this for a test or quiz, the number of points is the number of answers you should have. E says, state the hypotheses you are interested in testing. So our null hypothesis would be the batter has the same ability to hit home runs. with the 28 ounce bat and the 30 ounce bat. Our HA would be the batter has a greater ability
to hit home runs. with the 30 ounce bat. Then the 28 ounce bat. Suppose that when the results of the experiment were analyzed, the p-value is approximately 3%. Interpret this value and make a conclusion. So when you interpret, you would say, assuming the player has the same ability, to hit home runs, with the 28 and 38, 30 ounce bats. We would expect a difference In performance, at least as large as in the experiment. And if you had a value, you would put the value not at least as large as in the experiment. 3% of the time by random chance. So our conclusion with 3% would be that we reject HO. We have convincing evidence that the batter has a greater ability to hit home runs with the 38 ounce bat then the 28 ounce bat If the player finds convincing evidence that she has a greater ability to hit home runs with the heavier bat, can you conclude that the weight of the bat is the cause? Now remember what I said before, you can only do that if it's an experiment, which this is. So your answer would be yes, because all other variables are controlled. Two statistics students decided to investigate this question by asking two different versions of a question about texting and driving. 25 people at the mall were asked version A and 25 different people were asked version B. Here are the questions. Version A, a lot of people text and drive. Are you one of them? Version B, 
About 6,000 deaths occur per year due to texting and driving. Knowing the potential consequences, do you text and drive? The student suspected that more people would admit to texting and driving when asked version A. What are the explanatory and response variables? So the explanatory would be the question. And the response would be admitting to texting and driving. or not. The two treatments, which is question B, would simply be version A and version B. Why is it important to randomly assign which people got version A and which ones got version B? That would be to avoid bias, by getting people of the same age or demographics in the same pool. What variables are important to control during this experiment? Well, if you think about it, if you ask a teenager versus if you ask your grandparents, you're going to get different types of answers. So one thing you might want to do is to keep the ages consistent. You also might want to try to keep the location consistent because if it's not in the same location, you may get different demographics of people. If possible, you might want to also keep the gender consistent, or at least make sure they're equally distributed. State the hypotheses you are interested in texting. So our HO would be People admit to texting and driving equally with both questions. Our HA would be people admit to texting and driving more with version A than version B. If the students find convincing evidence in favor of the alternative, can they conclude the wording of the questions was the cause of the difference in response? And again, this was an experiment, so the answer would be yes, because all other variables are controlled. The two-way table below shows the results. Calculate the difference in proportion of people who admit to texting and use the difference as the test statistic. So for version A, we had 16 out of 25 
which is 64%. For version B, we had 12 out of 25, which is 48%. So our test statistic would be 64 minus 48, which is 16%. Describe how to simulate the distribution of the test statistic, assuming that people in the mall are equally likely to admit to texting and driving with both versions of the question. So we would take 50 note cards. and write Y for yes, or if you want to put A for admit, that's fine, on 28 of them. And N on 22. Shuffle. And divide into two piles. of 25 for admit and do not admit. I mean, I'm sorry, for version A and version B. Calculate the percent of yes in each pile. Subtract A minus B, plot it on dot plot, and repeat many times. One hundred trials of the simulation were conducted, assuming that people in the mall are equally likely to admit to texting and driving with both versions of the question. The value of the simulated test statistic was recorded on the dot plot below. Estimate and interpret the p-value. Our difference was 16% or 0 0.16, which is right here. So we're going to go from 0.16 and above. And that's 19. So our p-value would be 19 out of 100 for 19%. So we would say, assuming people are equally likely, to admit to texting and driving, with both versions we would expect a difference it's very important that you say which way you went so the difference would be a minus b of 0.16 or more 19% of the time by random chance.
Based on the p-value, what would be an appropriate conclusion? So it was 19%. So we would fail to reject. HO. We do not have convincing evidence. That people admit to texting and driving. more with version A than version B. The students were surprised that they didn't find convincing evidence that the wording of questions made a difference. Explain one thing the students might have done to make them more likely to find convincing evidence. So one thing they might have done is make the wording stronger in the second one. and also look at who they asked. 